So namaste, Saram, everyone. Today my guest is the Paul K and Colligan, and we continue our discussion on the um, okay, Satya Sai Baba teaching and Swami Shivananda teaching. So hi, Paul. Hi, everyone. Okay, that's very natural that we speak about these two great masters because Paul belongs to Shivananda Yoga tradition. I actually belong to the Kriya Yoga tradition, but also I'm a Satya Sai devotee and spent years and years in food party, Satya Sai Ashram. And very important that Satya Sai and Swami Shivananda met each other in the end of 50s and that's happened in Rishikesh, Himalayas. And uh, so today we continue actually to discuss the question of reincarnation and especially future reincarnations. So as, as um, I told in uh, our previous videos, that past is past, okay, past lives, that's okay, we can't change it, but okay, maybe we can approach it differently, but we can't change it. But future life, oh my God, that's something really interesting. And uh, today I want to put really like philosophical question, which is, okay, maybe based more on uh, Vedic Hindu philosophy than on Christian, you know, um, because, okay, in the Vedic Hindu philosophy, we have different branches like Advaita, Vishishta Advaita, then Dvaita, okay, Shiva tradition, uh, Vishnu tradition, and um, according to certain um, uh, spiritual philosophical systems, we must, that's our goal, to go beyond this samsara, the circle of reincarnation, but some traditions, they say, no, no, we don't need to go beyond because we, we must, we wish, okay, not must, but we wish to enjoy this duality. Yeah. Okay, let God be always separate, and we are separate from God, at least slightly separate, because we want to enjoy this, you know, game, the divine game with the Lord. We want to express our devotion, love, and how can we? Because if we keep uh, this um, distance from God. So, some <clears throat> for some schools it may sound strange, but I think it's a very sweet idea actually. So, the idea of bhakti yoga. Yeah. And um, of course, uh, if I speak about satisfy approach to this, according to my understanding, that of course satisfy uh, was very personal and. Um, I don't think that it is right to say that, okay, such a side teaching is like this or it is like that. He was like, you know, speaking according to the capacity of the people and different approaches. And we can take some of the quotes from such a side, which is um, like pure Advaita Vedanta, like, you know, no personality, only consciousness, like that. But also a lot of Bhakti Yoga. Uh, quotes we have in such a side books if we take okay that quotes from his books or his divine discourses so it means that according to my understanding it was very much a choice of the devotees how to deal with the future lives i don't think and that's my personal opinion of course that such a side could force people like you know you have to go like to nirvana to, yeah. you know the solution to the like you know just um, uh, finish your existence and be like um, emptiness oh no 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 you have to stay and keep like bhakti people so it was personal choice okay what what is the um, situation in the uh, shivananda yoga tradition what are what is the approach of shivananda swami regarding possibility of conscious not you know going yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Shivananda tradition, uh, that's uh, one of the main thing why I choose this tradition, or the tradition choose me. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, more like that. Yeah, uh, we're not choosing God's like, so like usually God choosing us. 
uh, yeah, but yeah, in the in the Shivananda tradition, um, let's say that's why I liked it so much. In the same time, I feel roots. It's like very steady. It's very uh, very traditional uh, yoga way, like like cl like classical again. I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. yeah why not? It, it's good to yeah, go on the classical yoga. Very classical, very traditional. Uh, yeah, yeah, like yoga and uh, um, with real guru kala, with really like according to um, uh, Bhagavad Gita and like. Uh, real uh, holy books and, uh, and everything like that, but steady rules, steady laws. But in the same time, when you got certain basics, like in Shivananda school, when you, when you got certain knowledge, like a minimum knowledge, like to stay on your feet, you kind of free, you kind of uh, painter, I would say, like you can, you can, uh, uh, if you don't have this basis, it, it could be problem. Like we're talking about future, it could it will be problem in the future if you don't if you don't have knowledge. If you if do like a, let's say experimental things with your mind and the meditation, if you don't know nothing about it, if you're not ready for that, of course it's bad. But if you have like core, if you know something already, and then you kind of have some free will to uh, like to uh, like um, to put it your way like uh, you like because like everybody is so different in a way like it's uh, it's not same for everybody it the conception could be same like the philosophy conception but uh, we're kind of different characters different karma different uh, nationality many 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 things and uh, so uh, that's what I like in Shivananda way, like uh, that's more than enough knowledge to uh, to know about yoga and like they showing you the way to go, like where to go, like what to do, and then you should do. Nobody will do will do it for you. Like you're supposed to do it by yourself. That that's what I like. It's kind of freedom and kind of like steady thing, like. Like balance together. That put, that's why I like it in, in Sri Lanka. Yeah, actually, you're always mentioning about uh, your own tradition. I mean, the tradition to which you belong to. I mean, Shivananda yoga tradition as the classical yoga, um, and I think it's it's a real uh, because Shivananda yoga that what we can call actually. Um, if not Shivananda yoga, then what can be classical yoga? Yeah, it is our yeah. time. And I think that, of course, the difference between Shonanda yoga approach and Satisai approach is that actually, um, I believe, I think, maybe I'm wrong, that in Shivananda yoga, as the classical yoga, the personal effort is slightly more important. Because, like, um, okay, um, uh, Shivananda ashram, I mean, in Rishikesh or different branches all over the world, including your branch, you teach people like how to practice meditation, pranayama, mantras, uh, scriptures, and you in, in, in encourage people like to, to to practice. Like personal effort is pretty much important, and I think that, of course, Satya Sai uh, he includes all types of yoga. Like okay, if we take Bhagavad Gita, then okay, four major yogas according to the Bhagavad Gita: Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga. Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, or Meditation Yoga, and of course Satya Sai spoke about all kinds, of, his spiritual instructions actually are about any kind of um, yoga including meditation. Yeah, it's wrong to say that Satya Sai was not a meditation teacher, he mm -hmm. was also a meditation guru as well. But I think that uh, emphasis of course much more on Bhakti, and that's very natural because uh, such a size, a divine incarnation, of course, he, he was attracting people mostly who are like more uh, bhakti people. And it means, in this sense, personal effort is um, okay in the bhakti yoga, personal effort, it's like, you know, okay, my personal effort means to 
give up my personal effort and live according to the divine will. And by the way, it's much more difficult. Sometimes people yeah. think that, okay, classical yoga is difficult. No, no, no. Classical yoga based on our personal effort, which is, okay, very much, if you wish, social one, you know, but real, real, but let me repeat, real bhakti yoga is extremely difficult because it means, okay, I give up my personal free choice, free will. You should drop everything. Drop yeah. everything. It's much more difficult in this sense of practice. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, very, but, so, very brave thing to do. Almost nobody can do it, like, for, for, for sure. For sure, yeah. yeah. So that means we have some uh, a huge number of uh, so-called bhakti people, yeah. devotees, but real devotion is very oh. difficult because you have to be just... They still keep themselves, like it's, they're supposed to drop even themselves, like completely, like you're going like into the, like, you know, uh, from the from the high mount and just go and teach us, yeah, like, just, nothing's gonna happen to you. You'll yeah. be okay, you, and you just go. You know, so it's I, kind yeah. of like that. It, it's, a, it's a question of huge trust. Yeah. Not just to see, and, but, you know, just trust. trust. Can I and, say something about it? Yeah, yes, yeah, welcome. Just a minute. It was, a, an, um, <clears throat> you asked me before about all this, uh, some example story from Shivananda. I, I just remember one. Uh, in the very old times, it was one uh, one thing like exam, like test for the students, like uh, for for devotees, for bhakti yoga especially. It was like the big hole, like in the forest, like mm, very deep, like. Uh, and then it was like uh, kind of sticks over there from the wood. You know, like in person, like, and the teacher said, like, you just go there, you just jump there, and believe me, nothing's gonna happen to you. You know, and the person said, like, how's I'm gonna die for sure, like, uh, how it's possible. And when he and who did it, they did it mainly from the wood, it was kind of uh, soft material from ground, you know, like, and uh, that was the test, like, the pre. In, in, in all times, one of them, and the person said, in, in Hulu said, yeah, he, he, it is like uh, uh, the person who did it, uh, the teacher was saying like, yeah, I think uh, it's a chance to be the body, like he, 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 he has a chance, like the real bhakti yogi, but, yeah. but the other people, they're not ready for real bhakti yogi, That's, it's not bhakti yoga. Like, you don't believe me, like, I'm saying, like, nothing's gonna happen to you. It's about trust, like you said. It's, uh, it's amazing thing, like, it's, uh, yeah, it was one of them. It was many exams like that, but it was one of them. Yeah. Yeah, until today we are, we just touch, you know, eternal question of um, spiritual evolution, and uh, it's a really and very interesting um, bhakti approach to the spiritual evolution and in this case our goal um, or at least I mean the goal for those people who uh, just walk the bhakti devotional path uh, to God is um, that there is no any end um, in this uh, way because like um, bhakti approaches like um, consciously to keep the distance always to keep the distance from the, uh, let us say, complete uh, enlightenment, to keep a little bit, um, you know, karma, a little bit ignorance, just to stay separate from God, to enjoy this connection with God. And that's really, really interesting. And of course, um, many actually side devotees, they feel in their heart that they, they meet uh, Sai incarnation not for the first time, means from life to life, from life to life. And um, that's interesting that I actually I met people in Put Party in Satisfaction who just express more classical, let us say, approach again. You know, what has been classical, that's the big question. I mean, just okay, I am staying next to Satisfaction and I wish to experience complete oneness. But so many devotees whom I met and put part in Satya Sashram, from the very beginning, they 
the told me, no, no, we don't want this complete oneness. We want to, to enjoy darshan forever. I mean, in our future lives as well. So it's very interesting. So very, very interesting. Yeah. Okay, let us complete uh, our video for today. Thank you very much, Paul. Appreciate for your time. So, guys, dear, dear viewers, God bless all of us. What can I say? Yeah. See you next time. Thank you.